What's up, Zox fam, and welcome back to Zox's Cunt TV. Now, we're going to be getting into Zora and her character build, showcasing her, and just overall talking about what this unit is bringing to the table. So we're going to go ahead and get right into it, uh, because again, this unit is our current banner unit, and if you are starting out new, this is probably going to be extremely valuable to you, so you know whether or not you actually want to uh, do some rerolls for this unit or save for potentially the next unit. Now, let's go ahead and start off with her S1, which is called Keen Edge. Now, it attacks all enemies and deals up to 60% attack damage, and it inflicts disease for one turn. Now, on top of that, she's able to restore her own HP equal to 15% of the damage dealt. And the fewer the targets, the higher the damage, okay? Uh, so this is an AoE uh, S1 that actually can become stronger if there's less targets. And if there is more targets, restoring HP, obviously, even if it's single target, you still restore HP. But restoring HP and proccing disease, which is a heal block, which is super huge, right? Uh, now, on top of that, we have her S2, which is called Rift Assault, and it attacks one enemy three times. Each hit deals 40% attack damage, increases crit damage by 30%, each hit has a 40% chance of dispelling one buff from the enemy, and this is after you ascend three her, phase three, right? Uh, and then from there, uh, you gain speed up for two turns, which is a 30% speed increase. And if own HP is above 50%, cast Keen Edge, which is the S1. Otherwise, it's a 50% chance of casting Keen Edge. So uh, if you have a threshold of HP, or if your HP is not up, then it's not going to be proccing, right? So there's that. Cool, right? Now, again, going into her S3, which is Galactic Rush. It attacks all enemies, deals 90% attack damage, inflicts buff blocker for two turns. If own HP is above 50%, cast Keen Edge. Otherwise, same thing, 50% chance of casting Keen Edge. Now, the thing is, is that you have a slew of damage parameter to go up and of course on that last skill up it's a cooldown and same thing for the other one right now the thing is and lastly where her attack buff or captain ability um it increases ally attacks and ritual sonic miracle and desolate lands by 40 percent and i think this is actually going to be the highest pve uh attack captain ability that we currently have in the game i think biodina has the pvp one um so yeah there's that right now before we get into, uh, I would say, specific things in terms of the build, I want to kind of clarify a couple of things because I've seen some people noting uh, that they feel like she's underwhelming, and I feel like it's on the stance of her initial burst damage. Um, what I will say personally is that Considering that she has the speed up buff, I do feel like this makes this unit a unit that is meant to be rotating. Um, I don't think that it's like likely that she's only supposed to be killing people on that, uh, that first initial hit that she does. I feel like the reason why her damage uh, percentage percentages are so low is because ideally she's supposed to be on a team comp that's supposed to be rotating her multiple times and honestly if you get hit enough by this you're gonna die like that <laughs> that's really that and, and i think if her uh percentiles or caps were too high she would have been uh just honestly way too broken at that point then of course having that pursuit or um, kind of proc with a keen edge on top of that that would have just been monstrous in terms of a DPS, right? So I will say that I feel like my counter argument to the underwhelming statement is that she is meant to be rotated. I think that that gives her uh, more value in terms of how she is going to be implemented into a team comp and actually building proper teams around her. So that's going to be that, right? Now, let's go ahead and get into the relics. Now, the relics are a couple of different, and really it's a couple of different ways that I would go about building her. Uh, so the first one is obviously with your, your typical war machine and your uh, fiery and cannon sense, right? Um, so on the war machine, we have her on crit damage percent, attack percent, and attack percent. Now, cool thing is, is that with the boost like being implemented into the game, I actually have a pretty decent amount of speed considering that I don't have like high speed rolls on all her pieces of gear. Um, so of course, if you are looking for more of that rotation, then you can obviously drop the attack piece on this last slot and put speed. But I would de definitely say to max value that amount of damage that she can do, you definitely want some attack there. Uh, now on top of that, 
like I mentioned, uh, there are other builds that I have been personally testing um, that I really like. So <laughs> I actually made a crit damage build for her as well. So um, if we were to actually go ahead and confirm this, right? So real quick, same thing, right? But we went for more scaling on that crit damage. So 300% crit damage, 85% uh, crit rate. I do have to do a little bit more adjusting on this build because again, one thing that you still will need is some accuracy so that she can land her disease, so she can land her buff block. That's gonna be super, super huge to um, the hits that she's just you know going around spewing, right? Uh, but then we have still about three point, like, 3k attack so the attack kind of drops so definitely would need some more attack subs to just kind of filter that out but uh not too bad i could probably drop some crit rate but all in all through and through these two builds end up being really really good now the last build that i would actually utilize on her uh is actually going to be a farming build and that's the one of the ones that we'll be showcasing today because again I will say that because her S1 does offer so much value in terms of her being able to uh, heal herself, if you can add value to her other abilities, she can be a very, very solid farmer. Now, um, considering, let's actually swap this piece out. Uh, we're gonna actually put on attack, right? And it's okay if the crit damage and the crit rate drops a little bit. That is absolutely okay. Uh, but I would say if we were going to run Hades on her, definitely want that crit, crit damage percent, attack bonus, and attack bonus, right? Um, I will say for farming purposes, the best set for her uh, for just sustainability purposes will be the Hades with the counterattack. Uh, this is absolutely a ridiculous set for her when you're looking for trying to build her as a farmer, if that is what your goal is. Um, so we're going to go ahead uh, and showcase her in a moment but we're going to take one quick look at her ascension board now um, obviously with her ascension board she gains speed attack and crit rate so you can already see like again i feel like when a unit has speed in their kit it's because they're meant to be rotating a lot of the times and she is one of the few dps that actually has this innately within her kit um so i do think that that is worth taking a look at in terms of how we actually go about utilizing this unit um, and what kind of compositions you would be using her in, right? So that's that, right? Um, of course, phase three is the most important thing because you will get the uh, accessibility to being able to uh, dispel buffs, which actually at that point makes her a uh, buff stripper. So she ends up having a lot of different hats um, within her kit, right? Uh, now for resonance, I would definitely say throw that bad boy into some attack. Um, that's what I would aim for. I really do feel like um, there's a weird, or oddly a uh, significant amount of people going for defense, and that might be because they're trying to make her a little bit more tankier. But I would say uh, definitely going for attack, especially if you're going to be doing like the farming build, right? So that's going to be that. But let's go ahead and show this unit now keep in mind guys this is not the only showcase i'll be doing for zora uh, i will be showcasing her in uh a um a desolate um lands run and actually for a couple of different runs um so do keep an eye out for that because i don't want you guys to think that this is the only way i'm showing her, all right now unfortunately i will say one of the things that is kind of uh, a bad thing is that her attack captain lead doesn't work in like farming situations but it doesn't mean that she can't still be utilized as a farmer um and again i think this even just kind of emphasizes just where you want to typically be using her and in a lot of the sense a lot of pieces of content that require you to have uh speed and or be rotating right so let's go ahead and show her off so she can solo this by the way so that speed up buff actually ends up helping out significantly and even with the silence, just her being able to do this, like, it's actually, like, pretty solid. So the more and more that she hits, obviously, this just ends up being a really good amount of damage uh, over time. And I think because of the fact that she can do uh, heal block, that ends up giving her a lot of value in terms of countering uh, those healing teams. Now, obviously, she can get countered by, like, cleansers and stuff like that. Um, but considering that we do have some really, really strong healers within the game, uh, the fact that she can AoE heal block, I think that that's a huge, huge plus. And on top of that, being able to AoE um, buff block is also something that I think that... That's just the icing on top of her kit, right? 
But adding that value of her having the Hades set on here actually makes it to where she's able to get a significant amount of HP back. Um, because again, when she uses her other two abilities, she doesn't restore HP off of those. It has to be Keen Edge that's doing the restoration. But when you add more value to that, um, uh, really to what her kit does by using like the Hades set, for example, uh, she ends up being extremely good in a PVE situ uh, situation. And I think that this was important for me to show because again, for those that are starting the game out and looking to see if you want to pick her up, uh, she can actually do quite well. Um, very, very well, to be honest. So I'm going to go ahead and encounter that. And we should be almost done with this run. There we go. Now, keep in mind, guys, another thing I want to mention is that my Zora has no skill ups right now. So if she had proper skill cooldowns and she also had her max damage uh, percentiles, she would actually be performing a lot better. So I think that that's worth mentioning because, again, I do want to emphasize that this is a unit that you want to put full investment into. So... That's pretty much going to be that. Uh, we are nearing the end here. It's a good old fashioned GG. Uh, and yeah, man, let me know what you guys think. If you like Zora and what you personally uh, would put on her in terms of a build, let me know down below and I'll catch you guys in the next one.